better to kick off lucky or godlike than uh nico huh it's been some time since we've done one of these and just watching the game today from cologne this is an elimination match between g2 and ends and nico put up i think it was 33 kills 15 deaths the only player in the entire first half who had over or over ct sides who had over 1.0 rating and he had a 1.74 uh, this was not just a great performance from Nico, but absolutely imperative because it's a place where uh, G2 have lost a lot of important series, actually, on Ancient. It's been an important map for them in the pool recently. And it's also a revenge match over Ents to beat them on Ancient. So I think that you could see that G2 were still were good at Ancient and clearly are putting a lot of work in. But the, they, they lost an OT versus Ents. They had a really bad loss versus Astralis. So <clears throat> they've, they've kind of, they kind of are changing the story for themselves. And they do it again in an elimination match here in the last tournament of the season in Cologne. And it's been pretty heartbreaking for, it will be, it will continue to be pretty heartbreaking with teams at maximum expectations as kind of as prepared as you'll ever be to win an event, right? To come into the, the match right before the player break where you're playing the most, you're practicing the most. Nobody's bringing in new things. There are some roster moves that you have to worry about, but the teams that made roster moves are not the ones who are at the advantage. It's the teams who have stuck together, right? For the most part. So for, G, for a team like G2, as it is in almost every tournament this year, it is another opportunity to win course we don't we don't have like proof that g2 can just win a tournament we know that they can beat almost anybody inside of a tournament but that they're not consistent enough to do that in a row like over and over again so here's an interesting one also because you know the result of well i mean the amount of output already here flash assists multiple kills and i, I think I think is this around one? I can't remember. I'm not sure if I caught the first half of this game or not. Let's see. Jack's always good for a clutch, though. I mean, I'd say Jax is always good for a clutch. He's um, honestly a really underrated clutcher. But does he figure this out? Where is he? Uh, okay, that'll be a bit hard. Uh oh. Yeah. No. No chance of that with no kit. So. Okay, I think that kind of sets up this game nicely too because it's kind of like Nico does a lot, his teammates don't do a lot in this first half, and then they barely pull out like an okay CT side. Uh, the map is, the map, we don't know where the stats will end. It's obviously going to trend probably slightly back towards T side with the M4A1S nerf and with multiple changes that all clearly give the T's more advantages uh, over the CTs where they've smoothed out the angles and donut, they've removed an important... Uh, uh, view angle from temple to the end of donut which makes the attacks on a a little bit easier uh they have changed cave so there's one side of cave is 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 missing now the half the half of the cave is gone so you can't crossfire as heavily or it just takes less utility to clear it out entire entirely which is huge they remove these boxes which is an interesting this one is it feels like a bit ambiguous in terms of who it favors more i mean i think we'll learn more as people get used to using it more. But right now, I mean, whoever has control of the area has so, so much vision, I feel like so much potential. I'm not totally sold on whether or not it'll be no, really CT-sided or really T-sided. I just think it'll be very important and can be used situationally to your benefit. But yeah, here's another round where got a lot of deaths. But with the, of course the game that Nico's having, he's gonna get two out of three. It's underrated, but he here in the here in this deagle right here with the two, two kills he got with even just one basically a free deagle oh man okay i think this is where i really tuned in i remember this okay so i get the boost going it's perfect and we're taking some timings here doesn't hit on the first one but is intent on making sure that Hades can't leave. And then they pull this together. Oh, look at that. Last bullet. They put this together with just USPs and this one deagle. I think is the only deagle brought forward from the last round. 
And now you couple that with the damage that we did last round, then ants are hurting for cash. But I think they cleaned up the map. They cleaned up the map really well. Now time to do vertigo, I think. All right, yeah, four frags. So far, it's obviously godlike. Can we just put that out there? I think we've watched some games where players have had more kills overall, or less deaths and more kills. But I'm not sure if there's anybody who can watch this match in particular and say it wasn't godlike, right? Nothing lucky so far. So we've got some very honest duels so far. This site cover is something I felt was necessary to make the B site a bit better. I didn't anticipate it to be kind of wooden scaffolding. Oh, wait, wait for it, wait for it right here, wait, wait for it right here. Yeah, Nico got that. Wow. Nothing feels better than a full kill feed, just your name. They needed it, man. And uh, yeah, Nico's had some kind of weird games this year as well, especially in the last few months. Where it, uh, it also, it kind of made it hard to be like, okay, is the team getting better? Is Nico having problems because of the team? Or what's the deal? Like his individual level was just kind of fluctuating at a point where G2 more than ever needed to find some kind of consistency. And, uh, you know, I always say it's, it's so, it's so tough. And sometimes it's unfair, of course, to put as much emphasis on one player, um, as we do sometimes in Counter-Strike with players like Simple, Zaiwu and Nico to carry their teams just frankly but at the same time they know and uh we know and carlos knows that this is why they cost so much money they are expected to have kind of a lot of high level performances in a row that's just how it goes so um individual the, the individual level for nico it is it's very relevant and uh yeah Can't be entirely surprised that he can dip in form, but also that, uh, you know, he can kind of bring it right back. So, question is, can G2 win um, the entire tournament? I mean, it's kind of wide open. The end of the year, going into the player break, looking at the fact that, first of all, Nip are a solid team, and Navi destroyed them. And Navi did that with SDY carrying that game. And Navi are already terrifying from the perspective of just them as a team. But right now, Simple's on forum. So SDY is doing really well. And so is Electronic. That's continuing from Dallas. Um, and then there's FaZe, right? And FaZe, who it feels like once, now that they won the major, that we're, they're kind of returning to the mean in their individual level, at least between Rain and, and Kerrigan. And I think that's both something that they swore, you know, kind of wouldn't happen. That, like, they both really still want to win a lot. But looking at some of these scoreboards, it does it does feel like they're not as scary as... I mean, they're not as scary as they were at the Major, right? And they kind of have said they're, they've not had enough time to practice, all this other stuff. But some of these comments are, like, comments that you could apply to almost any team. I mean, it's... It's kind of unfair to be like, well, yeah, you know, how can we be expected to win when we just had to, when we just won so much? Or it's like, this is the whole, the whole thing about an era, for, for example. And some of these narratives and stuff that we talk about, of course, as analysts and as a community, I mean, players would be horrified if they heard the kind of things that we discuss about them. You know, the way we look at them and their place, the narratives, their, you know, their relationships, things that they've said. I mean... It's a lot of guesswork on our end. And that doesn't mean that we shouldn't guess. It It is all just a kind of... Um, it's all it's a big game that we all play in order to make this game more exciting to watch, right? And you try to be as accurate as possible. But sometimes I think about stuff like an era, and I think, how much is that on Kerrigan's mind as much as winning the major was? And I think if we see the results, I think it would line up better in my head that he said, oh yeah, I want to keep winning. So I can believe that now since they are, and maybe this era is coming, but since they aren't winning, I'm not so sure, you know? But anyways, that's rambling a lot about FaZe. I mean, maybe I should do a video about this because this is something I'm thinking about. 
a lot. Oh my god. Man, with Nico, I just never get it, dude. I, I never get it. He picks up the op, he misses, I just don't get it. It's so funny to me, I mean. There is nothing about the way that Nico plays that would make you think he wouldn't be extraordinary with an op. He has unbelievable, he has the best crosshair placement probably in the, he in the history of the whole game. You know, he does. He has the best crosshair placement in history. He has, like, the nice low sensitivity. He has, uh, he has a patient playstyle, you know? But sometimes he picks up this op and he just misses. And I just go, what is missing? What is missing, actually, with the way that he plays and why is it not working with the op? It's so funny to me. Funnily enough, I think when I've seen Nico op on T side, it looks better than CT side. Like, he actually looks terrifying on T side sometimes when he's picked up the op. But I don't, I don't really know. I don't really know. I thought a lot more people would switch to the A1S because I felt like the A1S was already very close to the A4 and then the A1S gets another nerf, so... Of course, something that hasn't changed... Oh! Well... Oh, that's good awareness. One thing that hasn't changed... Uh, Nico, by the way, in the interview after... Craziest interview I've ever seen in my life. They had Nico, the winner of the match, with Stunna and Yanko standing between them and snappy the loser who just got eliminated from cologne all in an interview at the same time i've genu i've never seen anything like it uh i was a little i felt like that you know i just want to shout out nico actually for being insanely honest and saying frankly that they knew what Ents were going to do. They were ready for the pace changes. They knew how Snappy likes to call. And nothing caught them off guard. I mean, this is after proving it, of course. But he said that with Snappy standing one person over from him. Which, I thought that that would be the part that, you know, you would have muted responses a little bit. People would be less inclined to be honest in a situation where you're standing across from either the person who just beat you or the person who you just lost to. Uh, but they both kept it real and... Um, yeah, man. I couldn't look away. What a what a brave thing to attempt, I, I feel like, in a, a live situation, but they pulled it off. And, yeah. And Nico, he proved it. I mean, they... Especially him. I mean, he had no problem here. Versus Ents. Okay, his two teammates die. Ooh. Let's see how he plays this in the 3v5. This is really interesting to me. I mean, he can kind of go any number of ways. He can... Okay, they're actually going to go back to the A site. Maybe just avoiding him entirely, but... 2v5 and uh, maybe he's in save mode? Yeah. Okay. Damn. I wish they went back to the B site. I would like to see how those fights would have panned out if he won one. Okay, well, looks. This corner still exists. Still exists, looks like it's still being played. Uh, of course, with no smoke. Oh. Of course, with no smoke, it's quite dangerous to be there. And with no teammate, it's dangerous to be there. But at the beginning of the rounds, not really hard to have either of those two things nearby. Oh, they're getting tagged. That can be heard. Let's see if Nico shoots at any point. I love how clear that is now, man. I, I think that's awesome how you can... They just cleaned it up. I didn't expect them to remove the boxes there, but... It just makes it so much less awkward. Gotta love Nico's USP with just Cloud9 stickers on it. Who is... Is it just a team? I mean, Nico's favorite player on Cloud9 has to be Axile, right? That's the most Nico-esque player, I think, on Cloud9. See, yeah, look how, I mean, look how clean the engagements are in mid. It's scarier, too, because you don't have the boxes to escape behind, but just way more open. I mean, yeah, I love that. I think we hear one. Oh. I thought he heard that. Maybe someone was talking.
and you line up for the ramp smoke. Looks like they're readying for just a pop. That's why I mean spamming the top of the smoke in case they're just like really close to it. And I guess if you smoke the top of the ramp here, you can encourage them to get close to it, right? But it doesn't doesn't seem like they're here right now. This is good use of your teammate who is one HP in a world where it's pretty scary for a hunter to try to do anything else. Ideas like these boosts are good. It does feel like Ents are a little bit trying to stay away from Nico. I don't remember if this round ends A or not, but... We'll see. Okay, there he is. Oh my god. Wait, what? Oh my god. Hold on a second, I need to watch that again. Oh, he just switched. Didn't want to shoot his teammate and made sure that he could like line up that shot perfectly. It, there was actually some semblance of a bait there on Alexi. Like a tiny bit, but he's he was aiming at the same time. Just at the perfectly. That looked that looks it doesn't I I think it feels weird at first. It makes sense when you look at it for a second. And obviously it worked really damn well. But it could have been um, a combination of not wanting to hit Alexi as well as make sure to line up that shot perfectly. Uh, and I mean, partly this happens simply because he quick switches. Which unfortunately will always be known as the Jacks. Especially on ancient, we could all we could all quick switch less, you know. I think in life. Oh, this was so close. I think from Spinks's view, there was actually a second where he could have stopped this, but try to be careful about that approach. Oh, that body. So annoying. The worst part about these bodies is their client side. So your opponent who's looking at you in mid sees a different body lying on the ground than you do. And you don't know how their body looks. So sometimes it's kind of dangerous to play with them. But of course, he has a D-goal. He doesn't have much to lose in that position. And it'll be over. Now, I'm going to spoil something here. G2 win every round in a row on this T side, which is huge for G2. And actually, a couple things. This was one where not only did Nico have a fantastic game in this 9-0 streak and closed out with 30 plus kills, but Monacy actually also had a great T side. And I think Ancient was probably one of his worst maps. If not his worst map, it's obviously just a new map in general. Um, wasn't played. I don't remember. I mean, I know Navi Jr. play it now, but I can't remember if they played it much when he came from that roster. Uh, and it's just, yeah, maybe the map that he had the least reps on and the least preparation before coming into a nonstop tier one CS. So I don't expect Monacy to eventually be bad on any map. I don't really see why he would be. Watching his stream the other day, I couldn't believe the amount of stuff that I, even as me, me who has 10,000 hours, was learning about maps. I've never seen a kid who had more tricks basically up his sleeve. And I don't think that'll be any different on Ancients. Wow, how did he even see Spinx? How did he even see Spinx? I think I watched that in the on the stream and I, you know, heck with X-ray, but I could not see Spinx at all there. It is, of course, like a touch different when you're playing, you know, when you're playing and you're like, but at the same time, through Nate Smoke, not easy. Well, Nico's farming every round. We've got some amazing kills. He hasn't messed anything up. Besides maybe the the quick switch you can't even call that one lucky can you because he not only did he get the next two kills he got a third kill he had the hold and he never missed a bullet in that whole situation he was actually unlucky and godlike all at the same time
Wait, so he shot with two different guns, and they're trying to figure out if there's two in Donut or if they're shooting with two different guns and it's actually a bait. And I don't know. But of course, they haven't shot at the exact same time, so it seems like a bait. Let's see if it is. A part of me feels like they're both there, but... Uh, I need to see... Shoot, I need to know. I need to know if they were both there. Okay, it was two. It was two different ones. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It did feel like it for some reason. Maybe it was that reload. I'm not exactly sure. All right, I had to know. I had to get confirmation on that. But this is also a thing. I mean, being aware of when your teammates are shooting, when you're shooting, and there's always a chance that you can use it for a bait. Okay, so they try to stop any fast play down B with this Molotov at the bottom of Banana. And Nico's been... Uh, and Nico always... Okay, one thing that we have seen a lot less, actually, that Nico does like he does on Inferno is just searching into B, into Banana, walking up by himself. It's a part of the map where you can actually get away with it with no nades or anything. I mean, you have chances where CTs might just peek you. You could dodge a flash, you could get a shoulder peek, that kind of thing. But he's definitely searching a lot less now, which I... I like, I like a lot. Wow, he didn't even move there. Madden swung back into it. Uh, even though he just dies, just shows you how like, how cold he is. <laughs> the way he takes these duels, so. All right. But yeah, I, I personally like a, 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 a G2 that does use him less to, to search sites, honestly. Uh, like, a, as much. Because no matter who he is, I mean, no matter who Nico is, if a team is at this tier one level, like Ents, and they use utility properly, and they have players like Spinks on the other side, you're not just you're not just going to win those duels for free. All right, this isn't. I wanted to say Call of Duty. I don't know why. This just mean spirited, but it's not some easier game. I don't know how to say this without. I don't know who to throw on the under the bus. Right, this isn't Overwatch. Okay. You don't just respawn every five seconds. This is the searching um, that I was talking about. And you can see how he doesn't even need nades to, you know, pull this off and a shoulder peek come, come out. And if you're good enough, you can win. And uh, this is obviously very calculated where he's turning into a lurk at the same time. And it's late in the round where his opponents don't have utility as well. So that just strengthens that search a lot. Ooh, some late utility down banana. That's a really important Molotov by Ents. It kind of shuts out Nico, causing a disturbance on the side of the map, um, and shuts out the option of him making it seem like they could be going B. And you can't deny that Molotov because he already used the smoke. But his teammates trading. And again, this is just as, this second half is just as much about uh, Nico as it is about Monacy, I would say. He did a really good job. Might be worth taking a look. Okay. What? His molly? He can't... No! I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> that's the hardest. This is the hardest part of the video. That's, I mean, I, I want to say that's 100% godlike. I mean, first of all, you know, Jordan at the free throw line, closing, closing his eyes and landing the free throw. That's what that was, right? Remembering the spray pattern. Under, you just saw a glimpse of something. He saw, he did see a player about to swing out. My man was standing in a Molotov, blinded and saw one frame of a player swinging on banana and got two kills. O opened his eyes and got two kills. Is there anything that's, I, I'm gonna, I mean, it's got luck. Is there anything else that's, is, is it lucky? Is that lucky? I mean, you didn't know about the second player. This one is hard. This one is hard for me. It just feels like there has to be at least one lucky, surely. Now, no, I, most of the time, I guess it's going to be like a kill through the smoke. Something like that. 
We haven't seen that yet. That was insane. Yeah, he's already at 30 frags. So I'm hoping B control isn't getting taken. Oh. oh man, that was so smart. I mean, he didn't peek into Snappy. He just made sure to, you know, I just really like that because obviously if you don't get the trade, it sucks. But like you have this really good line here and he just took us like a, sn a small step back. I mean, this should be, this is kind of kind of like obvious or whatever, but he took a small step back and then sprayed. So he just had better coverage of this line on the way back into the site. And he also put himself a little bit out of harm uh, in this area from Snappy, who's on the corner looking in. So Snappy in the second is going to say, either I push out forward and try to get more, or I just fall back. And with that little pause, then Snappy stood there and fell back in a second. Nico used that pause to get a better angle on his fallback and spam him. That was really good. And another another situation where I don't think that's lucky. I mean, that's really well, really well planned. It's lucky in the sense of, I mean, he literally can't see him. So, you know, there is an element to it, but it's so well orchestrated. I don't want to take credit away from him. Sphinx in general is just somebody who can stand up to the best rifler on your team in a lot of these games. He's he's so he's such a phenomenal player. He's, he's really good. He's getting better all the time. He's so consistent, actually. I think he does, I think he does, and some of the ends, but like, you know, in the big games, I think there are moments where these players are not as good as they, you know, need to be to be able to win events. I think so, for sure. I think they're pretty calm, and as they said, pretty calm and don't get too nervous or anything, but they're still human, and they still have to see themselves win, I think, to have some confidence in that, and they haven't been able to close out an event. Wow. There was no fighting back against that. Just this that was a Tarek step back. Oh no, guys, that was a Tarek step back. Should we watch it again? Oh, this is the perfect example. I mean it. This is the Tarek step back, okay. Now this is actually uh unintentional variation of the Tarek step back, as we're about to see, because I think he loses he doesn't have vision, then he finds it, then he does a Tarek step back into the spray down. Let's take a look. Doesn't see him back. Ah, yes. It, it is the, it is an unintentional variation of the step back. Same effect, different intention. Okay, steps back, thinking about switching his view angle to the right to clear the right side of cave. Spot snappy, but with that step back, the same effect. Snappy shooting at where he was. Nico comes in, boom, Tarek step back. That's the Tarek step back. That's what we're talking about with the Tarek step back. I don't want to hear any more questions about what the Tarek step back is. That was a Tarek step back. Why is it called a Tarek step back? Because that's what Tarek does intentionally a lot. Or did. I don't know if you can still do that in, in Valorant. But he's doing he does he's always done that in CS. It's his thing. It's like the Iverson fadeaway, the Tarek step back. Jack's always good for a clutch, isn't he? Always good for a clutch. What a player. Wow, we even got a Tarek step back in here. Okay, perfect. Well, I think that was clearly godlike. I'm going to leave nothing to be desired here at the end of the, the video. We're locking in a godlike. We're talking about a 20 kill CT half with a 1.74 rating, and then a T-side, 9-0, 13-6 for Nico, 9-0 in rounds, 2.30 rating, 33-15 and 15 overall. He he farmed, and I, I'm really tempted actually to watch this Monacy T-side. I'm just probably going to do that myself. It's a cleaner G2, and I think if Nico had, didn't have this great of a game, the game is closer, right? But I think maybe they still win. I think that's the important part. Again, because in terms of history, head-to-head, -head, and because of G2 on there, T sides, it's it's a map that they need to be good at because everybody in their mama has brought up how they've been struggling to open up their map pool, have a big enough map pool to take down A1 competition. They can't be giving up maps in best of threes, right? They can't just like hand over ancient. And I think that what we've seen actually is there there was always kind of an argument that they could play it. I mean, we do have very good teams that they played against on it. 
they lost some key games on it again this is where they got limited from the major i think in this matchup for example they've kind of just had kind of horrific losses on ancient so here 10-5 ct side into one round on t side to to get eliminated from the major and not make top eight right so that is that is completely unacceptable when it comes to their t side of ancient um but then they turn it around right after they have this win over phase they have this win just now versus ents and then we look back when we can recontextualize and we see that when they played against ents last time this is an ot game i mean this is an ot game it was actually an unbelievable game from Sphinx himself and if not for that then this is it's kind of like what nico just did to them so you you know they're there this is a team that can be uh can be beating very 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 strong uh nuke nuke teams or sorry ancient teams of course we don't have navi on this list we don't have cloud nine on this list so that's something to think about one way back in time here but those are the two probably best teams right now so yeah something to think about but that's cool g2 have kind of set up nicely to give them the self a chance to actually win this event and i think as long as this g2 has these players there is always a chance that they can win the event uh will they do it will they actualize that who knows it's not easy to win events it's only getting harder and they still clearly have stuff to work on but yeah trending in the right direction so far and not one of the teams to suffer incredible heartbreak here at Cologne so far. So I'll see how far they can go and pay attention to it. Hope you enjoyed that one and uh, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, appreciate you. Smoking dope with saying raps out on the patio. <laughs>